What is preparation? If we ask a footballer who is participating in the World Cup, what is preparation? Then he would say, preparation is that I train myself adequately in such a manner that I can perform good in the next match so that my team can progress further in the World Cup. If we were to ask a person who is revising for any sort of exam, what is preparation? Then he would say that preparation is that I absorb all the information that I need to know for my exam so I can answer the questions that will occur in the exam and that I can pass and get good marks. If we ask a person who invites another to his house for food, that what is preparation? Then he would say preparation is that I make nice food, good food for the guest and wherever I accommodate him in my house, I make that room look nice, tidy and neat so it's presentable. But unfortunately, when it comes to worldly matters or when it comes to things that are not directly related to religion then we know what is preparation we know how to prepare for these things but when it comes to religion or when it comes to things that are directly related to religion then we do not know the meaning of preparation and we lack in preparation how many of us are ready to say that we have prepared for the hereafter we are prepared to go in the grave we are prepared to meet Allah the Almighty in this present state. Now Ramadan is coming upon us. And how do we prepare for Ramadan? So this month of Ramadan is a month of blessings. A month that we can attract Allah's mercy. Allah's mercy descends immensely. So we need to make sure that we are prepared for this month. How do we prepare? We prepare by having a timetable by organizing ourselves promptly that in Ramadan inshallah we will take out time and we will recite the Quran as much as possible because this is the month when Allah the Almighty revealed the Quran we need to make sure that we ask forgiveness from Allah the Almighty excessively in this month because this is a month of forgiveness we need to make sure that we keep on top of any super erogatory prayers, any extra prayers, nifl prayers. We need to make sure we ask from Allah the Almighty excessively. We do excessive dua. It comes in one narration that once the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was ascending on the mimbar. He took one step. On his first step, he said, Ameen. He took another step. On the second step, he said, Ameen. And he took a third step. And on that third step, he said, Ameen. The Sahaba, the beloved companions of the Prophet wasallam, they asked the Prophet wasallam that today you have done something that you have never done before. Today, whilst you ascended the mimbal, when you took three steps, upon each step you said, Ameen. What was the reason to this? Why did you say, Ameen? So the Prophet Muhammad wasallam replies and he says that, the great angel, angel Jibreel alayhi salam, he appeared. And upon my first step, he said, destruction be upon that person who finds the month of Ramadan, i.e. the month of Ramadan comes upon him and he is not able to gain forgiveness. He is not able to gain forgiveness. Upon this, I said, Amin. Then on the second step, the great Angel, Angel Jibreel alayhi salam, he said, Curse be upon that person in front of whom my name is mentioned and he does not send salutations, he does not send durood upon me, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And upon this I said, Ameen. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam further mentions that when I took the third step, Angel Jibreel alayhi salam, he said, Destruction be upon that person whose parents or one of the parents, the father or the mother, they reach old age and that person is not able to gain admittance to paradise by rendering services, by assisting his old parents and his frail parents. Upon this I said, Amin. So we've got this scenario. 
a great angel, Angel Jibra'il alayhi salam, he has made three curses. An angel that is of a high level and he has made three curses. Then we have the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the best man to walk on the face of this earth, the best of all prophets, he is saying Amin to these three curses. So we can see from this that these three curses, they are not minor things, they are major issues. We need to ponder and reflect over these curses that Angel Jibra'il made and the Prophet said Amin to. So the first curse Angel Jibra'il made was destruction be upon that person who finds the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan comes upon him, but he's not able to gain forgiveness from Allah the Almighty. So brothers and sisters, this month is a month of forgiveness. We need to excessively ask forgiveness from Allah the Almighty from all our sins that we need to ask Allah the Almighty we need to cry we need to make dua we need to ask forgiveness we need to sincerely repent to Allah the Almighty because this is a month of forgiveness so when angel Jibreel is saying destruction be upon that person who is not able to gain forgiveness in this month he's indicating to us that this month is a month of forgiveness it is easy that we ask from Allah and we can attract the mercy of Allah and we can gain forgiveness in this month subject to the condition that we ask forgiveness sincerely and the second curse was that destruction be upon that person in front of whom my name is mentioned and he does not send salutations on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so when the name of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is mentioned we need to send salutations on the Prophet we need to send durood the shortest form of durood is sallallahu alayhi wasallam so the scholars say in a gathering when the Prophet's name is mentioned then it is compulsory because normally it is mentioned more than once so when it is mentioned once first time then it is compulsory upon us to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at least once so we should say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at least once now the third point the third curse in Jibreel Alayhi Salam made was destruction be upon that person whose parents reach old age and he is not able to gain admittance to paradise because of not rendering services, because of not assisting his parents at an old age. Brothers and sisters, our parents are Jannah for us. Our parents are paradise for us. We need to render our services towards them. We need to assist them in whatever manner, form we can. Islamically, when parents give an order, commanders to do something, then it is compulsory upon us to act upon their command. Whenever they stop us, they prohibit us from doing something, then we have to stay away from that. As long as it is not breaking the laws of Allah, the Almighty and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So for example, if we are praying salah, for salah, and our parents say to us, do not perform salah, then in that case, we do not need to listen to them. Because performing salah is a command from Allah the Almighty. Performing farz and wajib prayers is a compulsory act upon us. So in that case, we do not need to listen to our parents. But I don't think any parent will stop their children from performing salah. But however, if they do stop us from performing any false compulsory acts, then we do not need to listen to them. However, we do not need to reprimand them. We do not need to say, oh, you know, you're going against the command of Allah. We do not need to get angry. We should just stay quiet. And with wisdom, we just perform salah. Unfortunately, a lot of our youngsters, a lot of our Muslims, when our parents are reaching old age, what do they do? They send them to old people's homes. And if they're being deprived of gaining paradise through their parents. They're being deprived of gaining the blessings of their parents. So brothers and sisters, we need to look after our parents, especially when they reach old age. It comes in another narration that a lot of people fast. And, you know, their fasting only brings hunger to them. I.e. they do not gain the full reward of fasting. They do not gain the full blessings of Ramadan. Why? Because whilst they fast, they indulge in backbiting. They indulge in sins. They indulge in evil. So their fast it entails nothing but hunger. So basically they do not gain the full rewards of fasting. They do not gain the full blessings of fasting. So brothers and sisters, in Ramadan, when we do good acts, we need to make sure that we stay away from evil, we stay away from sin, we stay away from bad. Another point I wanted to mention 
was the point of Tarawih Salah. And now time is very short, so I will just and I'll keep it very short. A lot of his brothers and sisters, they perform eight rakats of Tarawih. The true and correct opinion is that Tarawih Salah is 20 rakats and not eight rakats. There's many proofs to prove this. I will not go into much detail because time does not permit me. But I'm just going to suffice on two things. Firstly, if we look into Mecca and Medina, where Islam started off, until this day and age, even in the Haram, 20 rakats of Tarawih is still performed. Likewise, in Medina, Munawwara, 20 rakats of Tarawih is still performed. If Tarawih was really 8 rakats, where Islam started off, don't you think they should be performing 8 rakats there? So they still perform 20 rakats until this day and age. So brothers and sisters, this is enough evidence that Tarawih Salah is 20 rakats. Let's hypothetically assume that Tarawih Salah is 20 rakats. Even though we know that Tarawih is 20 rakats. And we perform 8 rakats. Then, you know, when we go in front of Allah the Almighty on the Day of Judgment, then Allah the Almighty may ask us that Tarawih Salah was 20 rakats. So why did you just perform 8 rakats? Where are the other 12 rakats that you miss daily in Ramadan. And if we perform 20 rakats Tarawih prayers, and let's just assume hypothetically that Tarawih Salah is 8 rakats, but we perform 20 rakats, then on the Day of Judgment when we go in front of Allah the Almighty, then Allah the Almighty will not say to us that why did you perform extra 12 rakats? Rather, this is a month where our rewards are multiplied manifold. We get immense rewards. So if we perform extra 12 rakats, then we will be gaining immense rewards. So brothers and sisters, we should perform 20 rakats and not 8 because this is a month of reward and we need to reap the rewards. So may Allah the Almighty give us the ability to gain forgiveness. May Allah the Almighty give us the ability to make as much dua in this month as possible. And may Allah the Almighty give us the ability to prepare properly for this month. And may Allah the Almighty give us the ability to perform 20 rakats of tarawih prayers. And may Allah the Almighty give us the ability to act upon everything that has been said. Ameen wa akhlu da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.